Hi, and welcome to another Time Out with me on the channel. My name is Alec Godwin. If you're meeting me for the first time, welcome. So today I want to explain just why my Sony A7 IV, the cheaper camera, is my A cam, and the Sony FX3, the more expensive camera, is actually my B cam. Now, if you own both cameras and you still use the Sony FX3 as your A cam, then in this video, I will give you seven reasons why you should consider using the A7 IV instead. Let's start by first of all breaking it down. What is an A cam? What are we really looking for to qualify a camera as the main or A cam? Image quality is always the most important, at least for me and in my experience. Also, I would like to clarify that it's always better to have the same camera with the same picture profile. For example, two Sony A7 IV, two Sony FX3 as your A and B cameras, perfect. But generally, we do switch them up just because um, some cameras don't have the qualities of the others in terms of like high frame rates which the Sony FX3 is a lot better than the uh, A7 IV, okay? Uh, low light, FX3 is better. So um, we might want to have both cameras and switch it up a little bit because you will be able to access some qualities that one or the other don't have or one has over the other. That is the reason why you might want to switch up a little bit, but it is advisable to stay in the same picture profile, for example, all Sony cameras, okay? Uh, at least the 10-bit cameras. Um, if I'm using a A7 IV, A7, uh, Sony FX3, Sony FX6, A9, even the Sony Venice, they are all in the same similar space, which is um, color profile space. Uh, and then we usually tend to get the same result, uh, very similar result, so, so that color grading in post will not be a problem, okay? Canon, the same thing. You could use the Canon on C70 um, and the Canon um, R5, stuff like that. They'll still have similar picture profile and still be able to merge. I have explained this before in other videos. I believe you understand that. So now let's proceed to why I chose the A74 as my A cam over the FX3. Let's use this YouTube video as an example. The main hero shot which is this one right here, is usually done by the A-cam, usually on the tripod, like we have right here, not moving. You can also have a teleprompter on it, just like I have in this case, because this is where the subject will be looking at as the main point of focus, the A-cam. Now over here, the B-cam can be a close-up of the subject, just like this, a portrait shot. It can be a top-down, overhead uh, shot if we are just to show the hands or um, if we are doing review of an item just like this uh, it could be you know whatever it could be B roll while you are talking on the A roll which is the A cam um, the camera is out there capturing B roll around the premises but the bottom line is they, they work hand in hand they help tell the story that we are trying to tell or showcase or present. We all know that the Sony FX3 is the overall better camera due to its features. However, the A74 has the better image straight out of camera. They both have the same dynamic range, but the A74 has a slight edge as its image is um, sampled from the 7K sensor. To be honest, most people won't be able to tell the difference in terms of image quality uh, due to YouTube compression, but trust me, there is. The next reason why I will choose the A7 IV as my main camera over the FX3 is the absence of focus breathing. The A7 IV being the newer camera from Sony came with, uh, uh, it came with the ability to compensate or correct the focus breathing issue, which is actually there in most of the lenses from Sony. Now, um, like right now I'm looking 
at the camera and I'm talking and I'm moving forward and backwards. Now on the FX3, um, the FX3 doesn't have that, that ability, at least not at the time of this video. It doesn't have the ability to compensate for the um, focal length. So when I move, it breathes. The background will breathe with it. The image might move unless the lens has got some better qualities. I don't notice it right now on the rocking on, um, but yeah, it's not bad on the rocking on, but on some other Sony lenses, it is very, actually on most Sony lenses, it is bad. And that's why they introduced this feature. The FX6 has it as well. And um, I think the A1 is not when the Sony A7S 3 or the FX3 for now. So I believe in the future, maybe they probably update it, but uh, it doesn't work with older Sony lenses and third uh, party lenses as well. So keep that in mind. Um, if you want to enjoy this feature, you will need newer lenses. And, uh, the G lenses and GM lenses. Um, I think you, should, you can visit the Sony's uh, site um, where those are listed. Okay, and if I can get the resource, I'll put it in the link as well. Now, the next reason, which is very reasonable, is price. Instead of getting two Sony FX3s, I would suggest you get one of each to save cost and get a slightly better image. Now, if you do this, over a thousand bucks can be saved. Now, the last good reason for using the A74 notice that I said good reason and I'll explain later uh, is it's slightly improved autofocus I don't want to waste time on this there are many articles and reviews and you know tests uh, online but there are improvements on eye autofocus uh, introduction of animal and bird autofocus as well as tracking better tracking the autofocus on both cameras are very very on point but there is some improvement on the A7 IV. This last point is ironic because it's actually a con of the A7 IV. As, as much as I love it, it has a bad rolling shutter, which means if the camera is moved too fast or is filming too fast a moving object, it will show some yellow effect, yellow effect that is really not pleasant to look at. So this is where the FX3 uh, actually shines, the A7S3 and the FX3, yeah. So knowing the pros and cons of each camera, I can make smart decisions and decide which camera is a better camera for the A camera, which is always on the tripod, usually stable, the A cam, okay, the main shot, stable something that you can fall back to reliable good image quality the hero shot yeah, everything you need in it now let me wrap up by showing you guys a talk show slash interview like yeah um shoot that i recently did now it's a three camera shoot on this set the most expensive camera is my black magic also mini pro 12k however for this project, my A cam was still the Sony A7 IV. My B camera was the Sony FX3. And my C camera was the Ursa Mini Pro 12K, shot in 4K to match up with the others, just for simplicity. But because I do not have a third Sony camera, I had to bring this guy in. Like I said, three of the same or two of the same will always be better. But I need the Ursa for other reasons, um, narrative uh, project. My point of, for bringing this up is the most expensive camera doesn't have to be your A camera. If I have to stick to one camera and not show the other cameras, that would be the main A camera the, uh, shot by the A7 IV. I can, I, I can survive with this. But for better storytelling, when somebody's talking, you want to focus on that person, I had to bring a third camera so that we have a full close-up and close-up. 
um, on the set I was using the same A74 uh, 35 1.4 uh, G Master lens as my main. On the B camera was the FS3 and the, the same Samyang, Samyang 85 1.4 lens as well. On the Blackmagic Ursa 12K, I I remember that I also have a Rokinon 85 with a Canon EF mount. So I quickly grabbed that because it's been long. I uh, used one of those and it came out so lovely with the Ursa Blackmagic. I was satisfied. Uh, you can let me know what you think, um, but the color profile and the merging of the images, um, I was satisfied with uh, the, the images looking like the same picture profile the Blackmagic and the Sony. And um, I have a video where I, I show you, uh, I'll probably link it up here, where I explain a simple cheat, easy way out if you want to merge between Blackmagic cameras and Sony cameras. Actually, if you want to merge all cameras, I just can testify that it works seamlessly for Blackmagic and Sony cameras. So check out that video. Just a simple way to make you go around and knock out these videos fast and easy. For the talk show, um, I'm, I'm making another video. If you want, if you are interested, I will make a shoot breakdown um, explaining what went down, how I achieved the image, and um, um, lighting, and then general sound and all that. So that um, for those who who are interested, who are trying to, um, you can you can you know, learn one or two things and share one or two things that I could have done better. Okay, so I'll make that in another video coming soon and uh, you guys can let me know, uh, we can interact over that. Uh, with these three points of mine, I hope I have been able to convince you but not, and not to confuse you that the A74 is a better A cam than the Sony FX3. And if you have an argument, take it down with me down in the comments section. I'll be ready. Yeah. So thank you guys for watching. Feel free to react to this video, comment, like, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one. Peace.